they making life worth living and retirement with having is about the people in our lives. It's about the people that we allow to be near our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our souls. When people rape a body, they do it in multiple ways. They either remove their clothes without permission, either force them to do something, or they drug them and then do things to them. I produced a meal for myself yesterday at Steak and Shake. Someone lovingly gave me a meal card as one of my Christmas items. I used that meal card in full. The last time was last evening. I remember the man who was on duty and kept trying to be on the register when I literally picked up my food. I'm pretty sure I'd complained about him in the past. I just don't recall. When you feel like you have the right to use your discretionary income to put yourself in a position of power as a customer, I believe you have that right. The challenge we have today is that the people who work in retail also want power, but they don't always usurp their power in a proper way. The way to have power in getting better tips is really providing outstanding service to every human being equally and fairly. And that's how you produce for yourself a quality restaurant. While I watched the Steak and Shave staff work busily in a very busy uh, weekend night kitchen, I noticed a lot of ergonomic inefficiencies, that they were having them cross back and forth over their work multiple times to do things. It seemed a little different. Now, I realize that Steak and Shake as a facility has been around for a millennium. Literally, there are 1940s, 1950s pictures, I believe, on their walls, or at least black and whites, of that kind of clothing and era showing they were around a long time. But modernization allows people to have more efficiencies in their kitchens. The reason I'm saying that is that my mind was focused on those things. I know that when I left, I had two burgers. This time they were done correctly. I didn't have any money stolen like I did the night before when I produced for myself two hot dogs. But what did they do? They said they were out of buns. And they took a foot long hot dog, they cut it in half and stuck two francs inside it. Or that was what someone did to charge me more money. It's hard to say. I don't usually leave a tip when I'm walking out the door unless it's someone I really know and like who has just provided me something. I've had bad food only a few times from those places. The reality is when I talk about customer service, I'm talking about our rights to the money we invest in the places we choose to go, either alone or with our families, to not only have good quality food for the money we pay and the value we choose to utilize for ourselves in those regular choices of where we choose to go versus where we choose to not go, that also we have rights to have safe food. We have the rights to be welcome in a place. Now, what I find is that my computer is not working pre precisely as I ask it to. But what I know is that someone has been monkeying in my files. That is a federal offense. You see, there's something called cybercrime. But again, who knows how to handle that stuff? The people who know how to handle that stuff may also be the people doing that stuff. That's kind of my point. Last evening, it was frigid, and I tried to sleep outside on a bench that was sort of private. I pulled a card in front of me to give myself a little privacy, and I took a long nap. It is very possible that while I was outside that target, someone rolled up and took my bag and opened my bag and got into my things and stole things. It's also very possible that the person monitoring my life illegally and pretty much having proved it by the fact that I have literally hidden in bushes and other places just to try and find some peace and quiet in the middle of the night and some warmth behind the trees, that someone is still finding me. They may think I don't know they're there, but I know they're there. I also find it odd that the minute that I roll out of a long day of prayer near a lake in my community in Fishers, where I've been walking through today, that I'm rolled on again. You see, when a man is rolled on, it means one of two things. Either his physical clothing has monitoring, either his bags has monitoring. My computer battery was not in it, so it shouldn't be able to produce a monitor, but maybe it can, a monitoring device or my entire body at some place, somewhere, without my permission, has something in it. I have noticed that since I left a particular establishment without my choice of being there, that I have something odd going on with my belly button. It is not exactly the same feel. It is very hard now as if it's got a ring in it. And frankly, does that mean I've got some illness? I don't think so. When a person is tagged like an animal, it means someone thinks they have power. When a person is going to a place that of such a great quality, 
like the Hilton companies and goes in and says, look, I haven't got my money yet in my email yet. I have to check it. May I borrow the computer? And a gal says, sure, absolutely. And then she tries to feel you out like you're telling her a lie. It's not that. It's that we live in a hand-to-mouth world. That when sales don't go well because of difficulties of getting through technology, it can literally impact our lives. It can change the way we live. I used to live in a lovely arts and design district where we could walk places and do things as a family or roll out of there without a word from anyone. When I went to this Hilton, I couldn't find the new sales for my book in email or in PayPal and how I get the notifications is email. So I literally simply sat to ask for permission to sit down in the lounge. There was not a soul in there. Unfortunately, being as fatigued as I was and as cold as I was, I fell asleep. When I checked my belongings today, this morning, I discovered that half of my beautiful faith fobs had been taken. More than half, possibly at least a third. Once again, someone violating my rights in my bags. Not only did they get in the over bag for the entire thing, they got into a zippered pouch, which was a toilet kit, and then they got into a pull string pouch that was keeping things safe. I found other things missing as well but I won't go into those details. You see, there's always someone lurking about trying to take advantage. If it's a Hilton staff member, they need to review those video cameras last night. If it's someone hitting me with some electronic device like we learned about in the Kingsman film, then we need to know who those people are immediately because those people are literally raping a man. All the things I'd put in my pockets were monkeyed around with. Things are back in the wrong pockets completely. Interestingly enough, they were put in the wrong places. They were put to back together with things they'd been with before, but they're not with now, at least the last time I reset things. Now, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. When a millennial doesn't understand federal law because we don't have a president that talks about laws. We have a president focused on business, the business of the country, the business of the nation, which is great. But in the everyday world of everyday people, we have to have the right to talk to others, to solicit them if we're in need of help, to ask for someone to help us, and to literally go on in life after loss. There are people that will try to mark us like my family members have tried to mark me. They've tried to mark me in so many ways that I'm guessing my brother Mark, who passed away at age 12, might be looking down from heaven going, what in the hell? are my sisters and brothers doing. But also my own father, who's already gone on to heaven, may be looking down saying, what are my children about today? And I wonder what he would feel like looking down. But then there's other people looking down. Lord Jesus looking down, his obviously common law wife, Mary looking down at least what other religious works say. And frankly, then mother and father God who created us all looking down. You see, the men playing my life think they're playing me, when in reality, they're playing the Lord's gifts. Think about that for a moment, that we have men of power so arrogant, believing that they can outwit the, the mind and intelligence and incredible design capabilities of the Lord of all. Now, when I talk like this, what do I sound like? Do I sound like a religious pastor? Do I sound like a rhetoric building politician? Do I literally sound like a reporter of religious things? Or do I look like a man telling a story of his life that literally they are raping my body because they think they have the right to do things to me and put their hands in my clothing when I'm asleep? I start to think about my own child who's abroad and how I would feel if I had heard that happen to him. I start to think about the little children I see in the community who are precious and innocent and what that would be like for them if something happened to them. Now here's the rub. There's always an evil person in these organizations who think they're gonna take what I've just said and edit it up and make it into I said something about harming children. That's a lie. I have siblings who want to say that I'm think threatening harming them. No, I'm saying stop monkeying with my property. Stop monkeying with my mind. It will never work. And you are putting yourself at lawful risk every time you do it. It's interesting how quick they come running when they recognize the truth, that federal law protects every little aspect of my life down to my birth certificate, unless we have liars already in that place. I'm pretty livid about the fact that we're allowing certain 
people involved in those places. I realize they need linguists. I get that part. But to put those people in positions of power, they tend to be very group oriented and culturally focused on their own cultures, and that puts us all at somewhat risk. I'm not saying we have to have pure Americans in these places. I'm just saying we have to be sure who is who in the world. And who is who in the Lord is the one who does things correctly. I'm not saying anything that other people don't think. You see, we all realize that the Lord kills ourselves. What do I mean by that is that the Lord kills us. When we do something sinful, we get a recognition of that. Some voice comes in and said, you did that wrong, or you need to do this again, or you forgot this part. Then there's those that have this voice that say, go take care of that, go harm that person, go into into their life and destroy their life. And those are the Satanist people. The Satanist people are the people who think they have the right to put power in someone else's life by taking things from them, by stealing property that they didn't lawfully purchase. And in their mind, if they lied about purchasing them by giving somebody money, they're out of their minds. A true purchase is the sale of one person saying, I'm selling this. Would you like to buy it? Tonight, I had the opportunity to show someone who was open and something that I was putting together for sale. He looked it over. He asked perhaps his girlfriend how she felt about it. And then in the end, he told me I couldn't give it to him. The cultural challenge I had was when he came out into the lobby, was he expecting me to give him that ring then or not? It's hard to say because I'm not of his culture. But he told me several times, no, no, it's okay. I've got you taken care of with this. The challenge is that there are people who say when they say I've got you, it means I now have the power to change your food, to give you spicy food you don't like, or literally to just muck you around when you're in our establishment. I was grateful for the food because I had not eaten all day. And openly, I had just produced some dollars in order to buy something, but the Lord told me they were for something else. Now, in your life, who is in charge of your life? Does a pastor control who you see? Do you know what you look like at every moment of the day? Or are you literally realizing that you could be walking around with spinach in your teeth and no one in your life ever telling you this? You see, the honest people will say, hey, I don't want you to embarrass yourself, but when you ate today, you left a little bit here and there. I have this monstrous beard and I love ice cream from McDonald's, but openly I mess myself every time. Thankfully, I have enough peripheral vision to take care of most of it, but I would love it if some girl said, honey, you've got stuff in your, on your mustache, like my loving soulmate did. When we took her kids for ice cream in the district, when there was an ice cream shop there, she, they all giggled because I had, didn't have much of a beard, but I still got stuff in my beard. Now, when we talk about these things, we talk about real life. We talk about the people that we love. We talk about the people we cherish. We also realize that when we share information online, we put us and them at risk. People monitor those things. They study those things. They try and play us. And you can't outplay the Lord. You see, in the end of your life, the Lord is what will call you home. If you're a person of faith in particular, you know this. We are taught this. We are taught that ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and basically we go back to God. Our souls ascend to heaven if we've made it there, right? Depending on your area of faith, you might get different renditions of whether or not you go or not, whether you go to a gate. But God's gate is not the reality. God's house is what you need to be concerned with. Are you in God's house when you live your life here on earth? Some people think that earth is hell. There are a lot of pastors that make that proposition based on some of the things and commentary and hermeneutics and exegesis that we get when we study the old languages. The problem is people today forget the magic of old. Jesus had a magic to him. We know of those things. It's not just the Magi who did things, that Jesus literally did things. We know of Moses turning his cane into a snake and throwing it on the ground. And then the magicians of the day simply produced it out of their sleeves. You see, anybody can be a magician, but it takes a real magician of God to do a lot of things. I can literally walk wherever the Lord asks me to go. I can rage at him for wasting a day. But then I realize he's keeping me safe. He's keeping me fed. And Mother God is watching over my love life. When that individual gets it, it might be too late for me. But when she does, she will realize that the fortune of my life is always the one I love. But if I say that, 
someone out there will take that information, run, and destroy that little person. Because they think a person like me shouldn't love. Now, why is that? Well, look at me. I'm furry. I'm old. I don't see well. And when I stopped in at that Hilton, I didn't expect my property to be stolen. Sorry about the itch. But openly, they took my glasses. Someone put my broken glasses back that I actually threw away in my sister's home. So that indicates that it could be a family member monkeying around with me. And I've already propositioned that, but they all say, prove it. Why don't you prove that? They can all lie and say that's not true because in their minds, they think I'm lying about something. Maybe. Or it's a monstrous person entering unlawfully my sister's home, getting, pardon me, into the garbage and literally taking things out that I've thrown away, taking away my rights to discard my property that breaks, my cards I no longer need when the Lord says throw them away. You see, they're playing with God. They're not playing with me. They're playing with the Lord saying to me, I think you should let go of this now. I think you should do this part now. I think you should provide this answer now. And when I listen, I'm in safe ways. When I don't listen, the magic doesn't leave me, but it's not as obvious. Today I got so many signs it wasn't even funny. But openly, I was also walked to people's homes that I didn't realize why I was going that way, but I do what I'm fitted to do. Now, in your life, do you do what you're called to do, or do you lie about what you do? Do you lie about loving Jesus, but then when a homeless man walks in your church, like I did today, at a place to say, listen, I haven't eaten today, might I have a can of food? The woman said, gosh, I don't know if we have anything, but I'll check it out. What she brought back to me were things that I have publicly said I'm not a in different places that I'm not able to really handle in my system. She brought to me chocolate chip cookies. I'm a, not able to eat much chocolate. She brought to me bread. I kind of have a gluten problem, and that does not sustain a man for the day. A young man brought to me water, and I don't do all that well with water right now. But people know this because I've said things publicly in different public establishments where employees take in the information and may provide it to someone who is stalking and ruining my property. The people ruining my property should literally go to jail because it is a felony to do vandalism, I believe. Now, everybody makes a mistake. Everybody breaks the speed limits on our roads without thinking. I don't because A, I don't have a car, and B, I just got to the point of saying, you know, I'm not in a hurry in life. I got enough time in my life to do what God is calling me to do. But in truth, if God is calling me, who is calling you? You see, if you're breaking the law, if you're monitoring people's lives, if you're stalking them, if you're stealing from them, if you're ruining their property, if you're lying about your rights in someone's life, you literally are doing what we call playing God. The difference is you're playing a hand against the Lord. And when you play a hand against the Lord, who's likely to win? If intelligent design is what created the entire universe and every human being, creature, etc., do you think that you're really going to outwit the Lord? And when you lose your life, whatever God calls you home, are you planning, literally, to go home and say, I didn't do any of these things, Lord? Or are you going to recognize that if you believe in a God that's omnipotent and omniscient and all the omnis out there, that literally you might just get caught for your lies? You see, in life, it's not how we're living right now. It's what will happen during our moments of transition. Will we go smoothly and quietly in the night like my old kind of uh, stand-in grandfather, Mr. Myers, who literally just sat down in a chair and just slowly drifted off? His wife, wife Ruth, a very devout Christian woman, found him and she talked about how he passed was just as quiet as he was as a man. He was a very funny man. He was a very loving man. He was a great man to have as a neighbor. And openly, that's what happened to him. My father's life was a little different. He was rough on his family, on his one child in particular, and he was tough on his wife. I understand why he was tough on my mother, because she didn't always follow the rules. And the lies that she can tell are outrageous is not totally it. It's that the manipulation of her own mind, believing she's not lying, is the scary part. I can't say that's mental illness. What I see it is as a selfish, immature person unable to take their responsibility. Now, when people say that about my life, I have a question, 
What gives you the right to talk about me that way? And in truth, I'm sure there's someone who's said it, but why did they feel they had the right to do it? I keep finding that my sisters are interfering with my federal right to have a real attorney, not shit on my life. And when they grab how much they have violated federal law, I will say, produce for me the proof that you didn't when your emails to me prove you did. Now in life, we have moments of time to make a full difference for anyone. And when a man is tired, he is tired. When someone plays an audio signal through his camera or through his computer without his consent to force him to sleep, that is a barbaric measure that the Lord is not pleased about. The Lord will take you home someday. How will you go will be up to the Lord, not you. Whether your life stands for love in this land is about you, not the Lord. The Lord encourages us all to love one another, to be brotherly in that way, to allow one another rights and choices. We surely have with free will, but when you submit your free will back to the Lord, you might produce a totally different, magnificent, magical life. Now, this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, LLC, on his way to pastoring a church and hoping for the right gal to come along and be his partner in life. Thanks for listening.